what is ethnography? Ethnography is a method of research in which the researcher becomes part of the situation that he she is researching. He lives among those people, those, their setting. He becomes part of them, develops some familiarity with those people, becomes participant with the situation. So as we discussed in the last module, that researcher becomes insider. So this insider, this role of researcher as insider makes interactional sociolinguistics ethnography. So that's why the title ethnographic interactional sociolinguistics. And what is its link with gender ideology? How we uh, use this ethnographic IES to understand gender ideology? IS provides better understanding of gender identity, no doubt. We have discussed it. And ideology, if it has three instead of two levels. Now, if you want to understand the relationship between gender ideology and gender identity through IS, what kind of IS? ethnographic IS. If this is your focus, then you need three levels of analysis. First would be micro level, that is the interaction where individuals are talking with each other. Then another level is meso level, the intermediate level, middle level. And what is that middle level? The external context of workplace. I would define this later. The third level is macro level, societal level. And that is ideological context. So first is micro level interaction. Second is meso level workplace context. Third is macro level ideological societal context. And what is ideological context and uh, societal ideology? It is heteronormativity. What is this? It is heterosexuality. It is an other term for heterosexuality. Heterosexuality is known all over the world. In our cultures, it is established, it is recognized that sex relations are possible only under certain cultural norms and rules between two persons of opposite sex. This is called heterosexual and heteronormative. Meso level consists of now micro level you understand macro level you understand meso level is inserted included in this talk in this module so i would explain it meso level consists of information we have called it workplace context so what is part of workplace context number one organizational structure workplace is part of some organization if it is for example office of a, a university office uh, for example it is accounts office definitely it is part of some department that department is part of some institution university bank etc etc so organizational structure this is part one and second goals goals for which purpose the workplace people are together. Why are they here? What purpose they are going to serve or they are going to achieve? They are working, for example, in an accounts office to maintain accounts of 
some office or organization, there is some goal, some activity that is common and where everyone contributes to achievement of that goal. Everyone has certain role and work and division of labor. You know these things I have already talked about. Third thing is role expectations and norms. Responsibilities are divided among members of the workplace. Information about these things is workplace context and this is called meso level. Now this meso level is very important. Why? Because below it you have micro level and above it you have macro level. So it connects the both. So if you understand workplace context, you understand micro level interaction and macro level the societal norm, the ideological context. As micro level discourse is connected with ideology, knowledge of ideology is important to understand gender construction through discourse. The dominant ideology in the world, as I said in the introduction to this module, the dominant ideology is heteronormativity that is known to everyone. What is that? I have explained. The dominant ideology remains the same at all places and over all time. It means it will also remain the same in every workplace. If it is the same at every place and at every time, definitely workplace is also part of society. So, this dominant ideology would also be the same within workplace context. If so, it will influence workplace gender construction and interaction. Okay. However, the shape of norms and discourses which index those norms, which indicate those norms, this is the same term that we have used in the previous module. The norm, normativity, the ideology of the society, it remains the same, but its expression in different contexts would be different. The strength of norms and discourses which carry them, how norms are realized? Norms are realized through talk. What society expects of a man and a woman in a particular context? How do we know that when people behave, when they talk, when they interact, they express those norms. Otherwise, norms are abstract. Norms get life when they become part of talk. So, the strength of norms, how powerful the norms are, it is shown by the discourse, the talk that carries those norms. That's what is known. That's what is not known to them. Okay, this is the point. Dominant ideology is known to everyone, but how at micro level dominant ideology works, this is not known to everyone. And how do we know this? Through ethnographic IES. Heteronormativity is hierarchical because society says that males are superior to, this is stereotypical conception that males are superior to women. There is hierarchy and when there is hierarchy, there is difference, there is inequality and when there is inequality, one is powerful, the other is powerless. So, the root of inequality difference is actually hierarchical setup. Now, here ideology is hierarchical, so definitely these things would be created. This ideological context applies more to those professional places 
which themselves are hierarchical. Okay. Look, the dominant ideology is hierarchical, and hierarchy creates difference, inequality. One person is powerful, other is powerless. For example, man is powerful, and woman is powerless. Okay, in doctor-patient talk, doctor is powerful, patient is powerless. They are not on equal footing. So you can observe this difference. Everywhere, wherever there is hierarchy, this difference exists, inequality exists. And if this is the case, then the most obvious application of this hierarchy would be seen in those workplaces, professional places, which themselves are hierarchical. For example, university is hierarchy, and then bank is hierarchy. There are individual branches, then zonal, then uh, divisional, then country level setup, international setup. In university, you have departments, then faculties, then and so on. So these are hierarchical workplaces. Higher education is one of such setting. Higher education means colleges and universities. IS researchers worked on a project in this workplace in university. The project is called GAIN. Here G stands for gender, small a for and, and capital N for inequality. Gender and inequality in he. Look, this use of he is very meaningful. It refers to man, but here it means higher education. So, this was a project. With the help of this project, with the help of the findings of this project, you will understand all those ideas which I have introduced so far. In this project, data is gathered through interviews and recorded. The analysis of this natural data, because it, uh, the data comes from natural talk, after analysis, the researchers concluded that there is gender inequality in higher education setting, which they have selected for their research. So, we conclude that IS provides helpful procedure to understand relationship between society's ideology and gender identity.